Hello and welcome to the second episode of my business taxes. So today we're gonna talk about the other percentage taxes. To be specific, that is section 116 to 127 of our National Internal Revenue Code. Plus, uh, nandito din po yung mga create law na changes. So for those who are new to my channel, I am Gletsmar Biig kasama CPA. Now let's start. So, ano po tong section 116 to 127? Listahan lang po to. Now, if ever, your transactions are listed in the section 116 to 127 of the NIRC, then it means you are liable to pay business taxes na other percentage taxes to the BIR. Of course, pag hindi ka nakalista dito, then you will not be liable to other percentage taxes. Ganun lang po kasimple. Now, let's start with section 116. So, ito po ay para sa mga non vat registered persons under section 109BB. So, itong section 109 has already been discussed in the past episode. So, I know this is already familiar to you. So, this is composed of VAT exempt transactions from section A to BB. So, if ever andito ka, you will be taxed at 3% based on gross sales if you are selling goods or 3% based on gross receipts if you are selling services. However, in order to be taxed sa section 116, merong mga requisites. So, one of the requisites is the sales or receipts mo or yung transactions mo are not VAT exempt under section 109A to AA. So, dapat Non-VAT registered ka lang or VAT exempt ka lang under section 109BB. So, aside from that, the second requisite is dapat yung sales mo is 3 million or below. So, bawal dito yung above 3 million. The next is, we have, if ever, you are a registered entity, dapat hindi ka VAT registered in order to be taxed at section 116. And then, Need then, if ever you are self-employed, pag self-employed kasi meron ka lang business as a sole proprietorship. So, hindi siya partnership, hindi din siya corporation. Or else, you're a practicing professional. Like for example, you're a lawyer tapos meron kang office. Dapat daw, pag ganyan ka, hindi mo dapat pinipili tong 8% na gross sales tax. So, I know that I've already discussed this 8%. However, di-discuss ko uli. Ano tong 8%? So, if you are a self-employed individual or nagpa-practice ka and if your sales or receipts is 3 million or below, so hindi dapat above 3 million, you will have an option of paying 3% other percentage tax. So, under section 116. Tapos, hiwalay pa tong income taxes. Tapos, eto lang yung option mo before the train law. But after the train law, dalawa na yung option. Ito yung option 1 na lang. Yung second option is to be taxed at 8% gross sales or gross receipts tax. So, ito kasing 8%, instead of paying these two separate na taxes, you can choose this one, 8%. Now, sabi dito sa number 4, kung self-employed ka at saka ito yung sales mo, dapat hindi ito yung pinili mo. Dapat ito yung pinili mo para masubject ka sa section 116. And lastly, meron pang isang requisite. So, lima lang lahat. So, we have, dapat hindi ka OPT sa 117 to 127. Itong section 117 at 127 will be discussed later. So, meaning, if you have passed this 5, then you are under section 116 and you will be taxed 3% based on gross sales or gross receipts. So, again, dapat hindi ka VAT exempt under section 109A to AA. Your sales should be lower than 3 million or 3 million exact. Tapos, hindi ka dapat VAT registered and you did not choose the 8% gross sales tax as well as dapat hindi ka OPT under section 117 to 127. However, hindi pa dyan nagtatapos tong section 116 because after the create law has been passed, merong update. Itong 3% na change into 1%. However, this is only effective temporarily. 
from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2023. Yes, July 1, 2020 to may retroactive effect na nangyari because the create law has been passed 2021 pero ang effectivity nitong change na 3% to 1% is July 1, 2020. So you need to remember that. So that's it for section 116. Now let's go to section 117 and this is for domestic carriers and keepers of garages and if you are in this one domestic carriers at saka keepers of garages you'll be taxed at 3% of your gross receipts because actually this two is selling of services. Now let's talk about domestic carriers first mamaya na tong keepers of garages. So pag domestic carrier that means you are into transport of goods or transport of cargoes or passengers and since you are considered domestic then the company is malamang registered dito sa Philippines so yun yung pinagkaiba nila ni international carriers so let's have an example first so we are having Cebu Pak and Philippine Airlines so eto yung example ng domestic carriers but actually hindi lang limited sa airlines pwede din shipping lines or land transportation company ka So, etong domestic carriers, actually, not all of their operations yung subject sa domestic carriers tax sa section 117. But as a bonus, I'm going to give you all the aspects ng kanilang operations. So, para ma-master nyo na kaagad kung ano yung business tax na dapat bayaran if ever ganito and then ganito. So, what do I mean? So, yung domestic carriers, meron tayong tinatawag na international operations. etong si Bupak at si Kapal, naghati din naman ng mga passengers as well as cargoes from here sa Philippines to abroad and vice versa. Yun yung international operations. Now, let's start with international operations muna. So, number one, What if yung ruta is from Philippines to abroad? Tapos, yung sinakyan, of course, ikaw ay isang airline or shipping line, it doesn't matter. Walang land because you cannot go to abroad in land or through land. So, you are going to transport either passengers or cargoes. So, in this particular na transaction or operation ni domestic carrier, taxable ba to? So, the business taxes to be paid is una, OPT exempt. So, itong particular na transaction na to is OPT exempt. Because hindi to yung operation na sinasabi ni Section 117. As well as, this could also be VAT exempt or zero rated. And I'm pretty confident that you already understood kung ano ang ibig sabihin ng VAT exempt from our last episode. Ito lang, meron lang ako sigurong kailangang sabihin about zero rated because actually pare-pareho sila ni VAT exempt meron lang tong iba itong zero rated so with that uh, bibigyan ko kayo ng illustration para ma-differentiate natin kung ano tong VAT exempt at saka zero rated to do just that let's have an illustrative example so you sold goods for 2 million excluding VAT yan your business purchased those goods For 1 million, excluding VAT then from a VAT registered supplier. So meaning, yung supplier mo is VAT registered. So what if you are also VAT registered? So meaning, maaaring yung uh, sales mo is more than 3 million a year. As well as, wala siya sa VAT exempt transactions doon sa section 109A to 109BB. So what will happen? Actually, this will be your entry. Debit, accounts receivable, or cash, 2,240,000. So, saan to galing? Galing to sa 2,000,000. And since you are VATable, so that means you are liable for VAT na 240,000, which is the 12% nito. Now, bakit ganito? Because yung VAT is an indirect tax. So, dapat hindi ka masyadong uh, ka kabahan if ever Vatable ka. It is because you can pass it on to the buyer. So, ganun nga, your accounts receivable or cash will be 2,240,000 including the VAT na. Now, the credit is still 2,000,000. 
because the balancing figure is what do we call as the output VAT, yung 240,000 na pinasa mo sa mga customers mo. So, your sales remained at 2 million. So, ito yung liability mo sa BIR. Pero hindi pa to yung VAT payable mo sa BIR because itong output VAT, uh, malilis pa to ng input VAT. Anong ibig sabihin ng input VAT? Ito yung input VAT. When you purchased from a VAT registered supplier, your purchases are actually 1 million. Pero, magre-record ka ng input VAT because babayaran mo din to because itong VAT registered supplier mo, cha-charge din sa'yo katulad ng ginawa mo sa customer mo. So, meaning, your accounts payable or cash, if ever nagbayad ka kaagad ng cash, is 1,120,000. And actually, itong output at saka input VAT, kuklose mo to. So, papano? Didebit mo yung output VAT because nakakredit dito. Tapos, ikikredit mo naman yung input VAT because nakadebit dito. And, the balancing figure is yung VAT payable mo na 120,000. So, actually, in order to get the VAT payable, it is simple as output VAT minus the input VAT. So, kailangan mo yung i-remember because it's needed para ma-master mo yung VAT. And VAT will be discussed after the other percentage taxes. So, ito yung set of entries mo if ever VATable ka. Now, situation 2. If ever you are VAT exempt. Malamang hindi ka umabot ng 3 million or kung lumampas ka man ng 3 million, nasa section 109 ka na listahan A to BB. So, what if you are VAT exempt? Then, yung clue mo lang is that you cannot use any of these accounts output VAT at saka input VAT. So, anong mangyayari? So, when you sell, you can only sell it at 2 million at saka yung sales mo 2 million because you're not liable sa VAT. Kaya naman, hindi mo rin siya pwedeng ipasa sa customer mo. It's as simple as that. At saka, when you purchase goods from a VAT registered supplier, ang simple lang ng entry mo, purchases 1,120,000 credit accounts payable na 1,120,000. Kasi, papasahan ka talaga ng VAT registered supplier ng VAT at bawal kang gumamit ng input VAT. Kaya, ito lang yung entry mo. At saka, wala kang entry na equivalent dito sa pagkuklose ng output at saka input VAT because again, you are VAT exempt. So, ito yun. So, ano ang ano, disadvantage pag VAT exempt ka? Wala kang ang output VAT. However, nagbabayad ka ng input VAT at hindi mo na yun makiklaim as deduction. So, yung purchases mo, 1,120,000 and we all know that if your purchases are greater, then that means your net income will become lesser. So, when you compared the expenses or the cost of sales, mas malaki yung nandito because the 120 na VAT, hindi mo siya makiklaim as input VAT. So, that's it. If ever you are VAT exempt. Ano naman pag zero rated? Pag zero rated, that means dapat VAT registered ka rin dito. Tapos yung transaction mo is, for example, export to other countries. Yan, zero rated yan. So, what will happen kapag zero rated? Ang mangyayari is, you're not liable to pay for VAT. So, hindi ka rin magpapasa ng VAT to your customer. Pero, ang, na ang maganda dito sa zero rated is that nakakapag-claim ka ng input VAT. It is because, again, VAT registered ka. Kaya nga lang, nasa zero rated sale ang iyong transaction ng pagbibenta. So, again, the example is an export. So, your entry will be for purchases the same with the VAT registered. So, meron kang input VAT. At saka kuklose mo rin yan yung input VAT mo. However, kasi walang output VAT, walang VAT payable, uh, we're going to consider na lang na receivable from BIR yung 120,000 na binayad mo sa VAT registered supplier mo. Babawiin mo ngayon sa BIR. So, ito yung maganda sa zero rated. So, ano bang nangyayari, mangyayari dito sa receivable mo? Pwede mo siyang i-claim as refund if ever you are uh, registered sa VAT tapos yung transaction mo is zero rated lahat. Like, walang nakamix na transaction that are VATable. 
Or pwede mo rin siyang ipa-convert into tax credit certificate. Baka kasi meron kang ibang mga liabilities in tax. Like for example, income tax. So pag na-convert into tax credit certificate itong 120,000, magagamit mo tong discount sa ibang internal revenue taxes mo like income tax. Or else, pag mix yung business mo, may mga transactions ka that are considered zero rated, may mga transactions kang uh, considered as vatable, then you can forward this uh, 120,000 sa future because uh, maaaring meron kang VAT payable in the future. So, you can use this as a discount sa yung VAT payable in the future. So, those are the three instances na pwede mong gawin sa input VAT na ikiklaim mo. It is because of zero-rated transactions. So, yun yung zero-rated transaction. So, meaning, I'll repeat again before we end this particular na operation ni domestic carrier. Pag ang ruta is from Philippines to abroad, tapos nagdadala ka ng passengers or cargoes, regardless kung airline ka or shipping line ka, wala kang OPT na babayaran. At saka wala rin VAT na babayaran. So, VAT exempt yan pag hindi ka VAT registered, zero rated yan if ever VAT registered ka. So, mas maganda tong zero rated kaysa sa VAT exempt. Now, let's move on to another operation ng domestic carrier. So, number two. What if yung route ay baliktad na? So, from abroad to the Philippines na. However, yung dadalhin mo is cargoes. So, what is the business taxes na babayaran? Actually, yung babayaran is the VAT on importation. Unless that importation is listed sa section 109A to BB. In that case, VAT exempt yan. Pero generally, magbabayad ng VAT on importation. So, ganun lang kasimple ito. Tapos, what if, pag number 3 naman, the same from abroad to the Philippines. Kaso yung ikakarga mo papunta sa Philippines are passengers. So, ano mangyayari? What are the business taxes to be paid? Actually, there's none. So, ito yung international operations ni domestic carriers. So, as you can see, wala pang other percentage taxes na minimension sa tatlong to. So, this means, itong section 117 is not for the operations of domestic carriers na tinatawag na international operations. So, Let's go now to the domestic operations ni domestic carriers. So we are still on section 117. So sa domestic carriers pa rin tayo. However, we're gonna talk about the domestic operations of the domestic carriers. So ano ba tong domestic operations? Actually, this domestic operations is simply, yung ruta is Philippines to Philippines lang din. So meaning one point in the Philippines to another point in the Philippines. So let's start with scenario number one, which is through airplane or through or through air at saka through water or through sea, yung travel. And you are going to transport passengers or cargoes. So if ganyan yung operations mo as a domestic carrier, ano yung business taxes na babayaran mo? Yung business taxes na babayaran mo are, una, percentage tax under section 116. So meaning hindi pa rin siya sa section 117. Or VAT. So saan nakadepende kung other percentage tax sa section 116 or VAT? Nakadepende yan kung magkano yung revenues or gross receipts mo. If above 3 million, then VAT yan. If 3 million or below, the section 116. So, hindi pa rin ito yung sinasabi ni section 117 na operation ni domestic carrier. The next is, we have scenario number 2. So, we have Philippines to Philippines pa rin kasi nga domestic operations. But we're going to talk about transportation through land. Tapos, yung itatransport mo are cargoes. So, what are the business taxes to be paid? So, the business taxes to be paid is again the OPT under Section 116 or VAT. So, depending kung ang annual na receipts mo is 3 million above, VAT yan. Pag below 3 million, Section 116. So, hindi pa rin ito yung operations na sinasabi ni Section 117 sa domestic carriers. So, we have 
number 3. So, Philippines to Philippines pa rin. Tapos, through land. Tapos, passengers na or mga tao na yung tinatransport. So, ano na yung tax na babayaran? So, the business taxes is 3% gross receipts for the sale of services. So, eto na. Eto yung sinasabi na operations ni Section 117. So, you need to remember this. Dapat, Philippines to Philippines lang. Or 0.1 in the Philippines to 0.2 on the Philippines. Tapos, through land dapat. At saka dapat, yung tinatransport are passengers, not cargoes. Yun yung under sa Section 117. However, kahit na alam na natin kung ano yung particular transaction na under sa Section 117, hindi pa rin tayo tapos. There's more pa rin. So we are still here sa Section 117. For domestic carriers and keepers of garages. So we already know na yung specific operation in domestic carrier that is subject to section 117 is ang ruta is dapat from one point in the Philippines to another point in the Philippines. Tapos dapat land yung pagkakatransport. Tapos passengers yung tinatransport. However, hindi pa rin tayo tapos. Bakit? You need to classify kung anong sasakyan meron ka. For example, you have a bus. So, you need to classify because you have the minimum quarterly receipts. So, iba't ibang klase yung bus. For example, may mga buses na more than 50 passengers yung capacity. So, meron tayong minimum quarterly receipts na 72 per bus. At saka if ever 30 to 50 lang yung capacity, meron tayong 6,000 per bus. At saka, we have... 30 or below passengers na mga buses, meron silang 3.6 per bus. Bakit ito inimpose tong minimum quarterly receipts ni Bayar? Para may makolekta talaga sila. Para may basihan yung 3%. So quarterly kasi kinokolekt tong other percentage tax. So meaning, if you have one bus na more than 50 passengers ang capacity, then 72 times 3% yung babayaran mo. So, iniiwasan kasi ni BIR na sabihin mo na wala talagang kita yung bus kaya wala kaming pambayad ng tax. So, according to the law ng NIRC, eh, iniimpose tong minimum quarterly receipts. As for you, you need to memorize this kasi hindi ito pinuprovide sa mga tests if ever you are an undergrad student or kahit na nasa board exam, hindi ito pinuprovide. So, you need to memorize this. So, maaari din naman na yung sasakyan mo is a taxi. Tapos yung taxi uh, can be driven sa city. Kaya pag sa city yung taxi, 3.6 per taxi yung minimum quarterly receipts. Pero kung sa province, 2.4 lang per taxi. Pwede din naman na jeepney yung pinagmamayari mo na mga sasakyan for transport of passengers. So the minimum quarterly receipts, it depends din. Katulad ng taxi, kung city, 2.4 per jeep. At saka, pag province, 1-2 per jeep. At saka, if ever, yung sasakyan mo, pwede rin din namang maging car for rent. So, depende na din if ever you are going to provide the driver or with chauffeur. Pag with chauffeur, 3,000 per car yung minimum quarterly receipts. Pag wala naman, then 1-8 per car yung minimum quarterly receipts. So, you need to memorize them all. So, yun po. Pero merong mga exceptions. Ang exception number one is if ever meron kang animal drone carriages eh, hindi ka na magbabayad ng other percentage tax under section 117. At saka if you are an operator or an owner of banka na hindi na yan subject to 3% gross receipts tax under section 117. Now let's go to keeper of garages. So, if you're an operator of a parking space, for example, tapos dyan nakapark yung mga public utility vehicle like, for example, Filtrancon, etc. Siyempre, kikita ka. So, yung kita mo times 3%, yung yung tax na babayaran mo because you are also covered sa Section 117. So, that's it for Section 117. So, pag domestic carrier ka, again, and you are... Uh, Transporting passengers from a point in the Philippines to another point in the Philippines through land, of course, then you are subject to Section 117. So your gross receipts is 
i-multiply mo po ng 3%. So, that's your tax liability sa BIR as business taxes. And if you are a keeper of a garage also, so any receipts that you have will be multiplied by 3% and it will become your tax liability for business taxes. Next is Section 118. Now, let's go to Section 118. And this is for international carriers. So, if you are under this, you will be taxed at 3% gross receipts pa rin. Because, again, sale of services itong mga carriers, yung pinuprovide nila. So, what are these international carriers? Na, international carriers are the companies who transport goods and people or passengers. Tapos, itong mga business na to is nakaregister outside of the country, outside the Philippines. That's why they are called international carriers. Example, we have Singapore Airlines. But only if they are doing business here in the Philippines. Because if not, then they will not be subject to Section 118. So, uh, tingnan natin lahat ng operations ng international carriers. So, we have number one. What if yung ruta is from Philippines to abroad? Pagkatapos... Yung dadalhin is passengers. Actually, the business taxes that is to be paid is unang-una, VAT exempt yan. Actually, nakalista to sa VAT exempt transactions under section 109 sa last episode. At saka, sa OPT naman, exempt din to. Because section 118 does not pertain to this one. Pag Philippines, to abroad, tapos passengers yung dadalhin, wala, hindi yan subject sa section 118. How about number two? Number two is parehong ruta, Philippines to abroad. The same din, through air or through water. Pero yung dadalhin cargoes. So, eto, the business taxes to be paid is VAT exempt pa rin to. Pero, uh, the international carrier will be subjected to 3% tax under Section 118. So, meaning, Section 118 pertains to this transaction. So, I'm going to repeat. If the route is from Philippines to abroad, tapos transported through air or through water, tapos cargoes, the international carrier will be subjected to 3% tax under Section 118. So, you need to remember that. However, since I promised you na kailangan talaga ang lahat ng mga operations ni international carriers, katulad ng domestic carriers, ang ating tatalakayin para mamaster mo na talaga. So, meron pa tayong number 3. So, sa number 3, although we already know na hindi yan subject sa section 118, talakayin pa rin natin. Like for example, if the route is from abroad to the Philippines, through air and through water pa rin, and you are transporting cargoes that is subject to VAT on importation. Unless exempt kay nakalista siya sa section 109. Tapos, ang number 4 is what if the same pa rin from abroad to the Philippines but you are transporting passengers. So what are the business taxes that you are going to pay? None. So that's it for number 4. So, this is it for section 118. So, our topic for this video is from section 116 to section 118. So, if it helped, please click like, subscribe, and then hit the notification bell to be updated on my next videos. And thank you for watching.